All right, everyone. My name is Pascal Borel, and I am speaking to you from the Swiss mountains. This is the story called the Saga of Sagarmata. I've named it after my home, named Sagarmata, which means goddess, mother of mountains, mother of the world in Nepalese. And the reason for that is because I built my home in Verbier, Switzerland, in the mountains at 1,650 meter high, and yet I probably built one of the nicest chalets of all in Verbier. It's the story of how I met with members uh, of the royal family of England, namely Prince Andrew and the Duchess of York, that wanted to buy my chalet. I had changed my project of life after living there for 10 years. Uh, my kids were born there and they lived uh, yeah, the best part of the first 10 years of their lives in there. The reason why I wanted to change style of life is because I decided to travel the world into a big RV, an 8x8, a big truck, eight steering axles, eight wheel drive that could contain, uh, you know, a four by four quad, uh, all the material for climbing mountains, harness, crampons, uh, ropes, uh, carbiners, and, and, and. And I wanted to take my kids, discover the world, do the homeschooling for them, because I thought it was much more adapted to the way they work, the way they are. And uh, when I met uh, with Prince Andrew and the Duchess of York, I can remember the first time Prince Andrew came to my place, he walks on the terrace and he's flabbergasted by the view. I have a flat garden just before me. And so and he, he, he goes, Pascal, I never knew that Verbier had such a place with the view you get and uh, the sudden exposure and uh, wow, it's amazing. Furthermore, the chalet can welcome 240 seated people comfortably because I had designed it to have uh, a semi-Olympic swimming pool plus four centimeters. So it was slightly bigger than the Sport Leisure Center of Verbier. That's a bit of a joke, but uh, that was a little joke with the architects. And uh, you can cover it with a wooden floor that I've built myself in order to welcome, as I said, 240 people very comfortably. And of course, uh, you know, after walking the mountains with the Duchess uh, for days and days, we created a bond where she was telling me about uh, her businesses. And uh, when we spoke with Prince Andrew, he thought that this is the ideal place to welcome one of my event, namely Pitch at the Palace, and why not to create the Verbi Forum, which is something I always had in mind, to, in a sense, counterbalance uh, the shame of Switzerland, which is the World Economic Forum and the Davos Forum, if you wish, that concentrates uh, in the hands of help and welcome people that concentrates your the value of your work in the hands of a very few. And that is not in the interest of the larger number. We've all, we all know that uh, for 75 to 85% of the world economy, it is due to medium, small size companies and the blue chips, the big caps, the you know, big techs only represent at the most 20, 25% of the worldwide economy. So concentrating your wealth concentrating the product of your work, the value of your work in the hands of such a few people cannot work on the long term because it drives us to uh, dictatorship, basically. I'll come back on it in uh, further videos down the line. So the deal is this. They didn't have the liquidity, so they've asked me to search for a bank that could lend them like 20 millions because the chalet was for sale and valued at 27 plus million Swiss franc dollar equivalent. All currencies are at parity nowadays. And OK, so I searched and I found uh, uh, two banks, uh, namely Banque Cotonale Vaudoise, BCV, which is the fifth largest bank in Switzerland, owned for 67 percent by the state of Vaud, i.e. the Swiss people by 
Switzerland, basically, and they have as a subsidiary for the private banking activity, Pique Galant in Geneva, which is much better suited and equipped uh, to take care of such high profile clients, you know, namely the most well-known family in the world, the Royal Family of England. And um, basically we <laughs> left the chalet, my uh, darling son, daughter and wife, uh, to put the chalet at the disposal of the royals uh, just after the deal was concluded with the bank. And I went from a 3.8 million mortgage, which is uh, not so much compared to a home, which is valued at 27 million, a uh, very healthy situation, to a situation where uh, I took a 20 million mortgage on behalf of uh, the Duchess of York and Prince Andrew. Mm. So the idea was for me to in a sense, on the request of the Duchess of York to take a participation into the York holding, which I valued between 10 and 15 millions at the time. So paying 2 millions to, uh, or 1.8 million for 20% of uh, an asset or a, a group of assets uh, representing 10 to 15 millions was not a great profit for me, uh, but it was not a loss neither. And let's face it, <clears throat> when you have no less than the most amazing family on earth, uh, which I respect so much, I think that the monarchy in the UK is the essence uh, of the country. And in case of a war, unity will be created around the king or the queen, not around the prime minister, Boris Johnson or whomever. It is absolutely clear. So this is a fabulous asset that all British people have in their hands and they should keep it. Fact of the matter is, when you have no less than the most well-known and highest profile family in the world that wants to buy your home, well, you're not gonna refuse, are you? It is actually quite flattering because it just shows that as I had drawn the chalet myself over a period of 10 years, I had the land match before, it shows that you haven't done, done too much of a shit job because would members of the royal family of England buy a shithole, as we say? Of course not. Anyway, fact of the matter is, and here is the thing, they had another chalet already. So, they were not allowed to buy something else. And in that frame of mind, uh, they've asked me to carry the mortgage loan on my shoulders, the contract on my shoulders. And I accepted because, you know, I thought that we were going to do a pitch at the palace, the Verbi Forum, the wellness center for the Duchess, so she can welcome her friends for a health uh, holiday, you know, at my place or at her place now. Uh, because it, it has the largest swimming pool, uh, semi-Olympic, fantastic spa, massage room, uh, gym. It, it's the whole thing, basically. And uh, I've put myself, uh, or I've let myself being put in a situation where I was kind of infringing the law because it's a clear, clear hidden sale. Uh, in the sense that I had to leave the chalet, uh, put, put it at the disposal of the royals, and uh, we asked for a, what I call, derogation to the law on acquisition of real estate by foreigners. We didn't get it, despite the support that we had from local politics uh, uh, to implement the forum, to implement uh, all the social events uh, that, of course, uh, the Duke of York, uh, Prince Andrew, would be able to bring. And so at that stage, the bank probably realized that they were indirectly or directly in complete infringement of the law, of the Swiss law. And I'm talking about a federal law, not uh, your local uh, building regulation laws that we have, you know, at a commune or at a uh, canton level. No. No, it's a federal law, so it's a, it's a very serious infringement. And on top of that, uh, 
uh, we had part of the deal was uh, to make Sarah a business gatherer on, you know, through an introduction contract for the bank. Because clearly the bank's motivation was not to make, I guess, me take, uh, you know, uh, irresponsible lending risks uh, or, uh, no, it was to increase the asset under management like all banks should do uh, through using the address book of the Duchess of York. Because you can blame uh, Sarah for many things, but one thing is sure, she's got the most amazing address book on earth, literally, and likewise for Prince Andrew. So we were meant to sign a business introduction contract uh, be between me and the bank. And <clears throat> of course, for me, it was kind of easy to sell. Why? Because the bank is amazing. It's a very good bank. <laughs> you know, uh, BCV, the mother company, belongs for 67% to the Swiss state, no less. So any multi-billionaire coming and shifting 100 million in the bank knows that the cash, the asset, will be protected by no less than the Swiss state, diversifying the risk in the most incredible way and protecting the assets uh, from whatever risk, literally. And because it's a very well-managed bank and with very good people when it comes to the investment strategy and so forth, I mean, it was easy for me to, once being in contact with the potential investors, to convince them that this was a very safe heaven, literally. So I had the first client. And I'm speaking with him uh, just the day before he's coming in Geneva with his private jet. I'm due to fetch him at the airport, bring him for the meeting at the bank. <clears throat> and everything is organized. The Duchess calls me like at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, Pascal, I've heard that you have your first meeting. This is great. Uh, you know, uh, X, Mr. X is going to drop a hundred million, you know, being a multimillionaire, he would not start working with a bank without putting a hundred million because otherwise there is no point doing the due diligence and getting to know the people and so forth. And, uh, and the just says, uh, the Duchess says, uh, but Pascal, do you have the business gatherer contract signed with Piggy Gallo? And personally, you know, I never lie. <laughs> I've decided many years ago that lies would not go through my mouth once and for all. And I say, Sarah, I'm afraid no, but <clears throat> the legal and compliance department at Piguet Galant are working on it, namely uh, Mr. Walter, Clyde Walter. Uh, he's in charge. He's a good man. And we're going to get this contract very soon. <laughs> you believe me or not, 20 minutes after I receive a call from the gentleman that was meant to be in Geneva the next morning, that I was meant to fetch at the airport. And he calls me and says, oh, Pascal, you know, I have a, a little um, problem for tomorrow. I cannot come. Uh, we'll reset the meeting for later. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, long story short, the contract was signed only probably three weeks, one month after. And... Uh, but the, the, faith, the trust was broken and uh, the Duchess of York didn't want to work with people which are so incompetent that they cannot even pull a contract up because it was like almost one year after we had discussed it and agreed on the terms. And she never sent any other person, you know, to the place. So... One thing, they didn't have the derogation or, uh, you know, from the law on the acquisition uh, of real estate by foreigners, so they couldn't buy the chalet. The business gatherer contract would not work. And they didn't send me the shares for which I had paid 1.8 million. Well, actually, I would say even 2 millions because... Uh, you know, I've sent them uh, the product of the renting of the chalet further down the line. But that's another story. We'll come to that. 
And I'm asking uh, Sarah to reimburse me the two millions I had sent. And of course, total refusal. And at that stage, we almost didn't speak with each other because, you know, I wanted to get the money back in order to lower the loan, the mortgage. And I, I can recall conversations where I was speaking with uh, Antonia, Toby, uh, their advisors, I would say, which are fantastic people again, in the sense that they have a loyalty to the royal family, which is unlike anything I've seen. On the other hand, the loyalty is one thing, and I absolutely adore those human values. But on the other hand, they don't really understand the difference between a loan and money being earned. And I recall, uh, you know, this telephone call with Antonia and where she's saying that I've made an obscene amount of cash thanks to the joint caution that, of course, uh, Prince Andrew had to sign in order to free the 20 millions for them. They were meant to take over this mortgage loan you know, and I, I had said to them, don't worry, uh, you know, you'll just put three or four millions on the table. Uh, I will lower the price from 27 plus to 23, 20, 24 million. Uh, and with the loan, it means that you can dispose of Sagar Mata, no less, uh, for only, in inverted comma, three millions. That was the deal. So I asked. I could see that they were not going to become the owner of my place, of my home, uh, that we had a problem with the business gatherer contract, the business introduction contract, uh, that I had, I was, you know, two millions below and I wanted to reimburse the bank because I was paying interest. Furthermore, the bank had kept into a kind of reserve six millions that I could not touch, that I could not invest away or another uh, as a guarantee. So I was paying interests uh, on the six million. The interests at the beginning were very low because we were already in negative territories uh, in terms of the interest rate. So I was paying something like 0 0.75 or equivalent interest per year which was still making it quite a healthy situation. I was prepaying all the interest 12 months in advance at all time, making the bank in, putting the bank in quite a comfortable situation. They were not taking too many risks. They had the joint caution of the Royals. Uh, they had 6 million, they had 6 million Swiss franc blocked on which I was paying interest anyway. And, uh, so I was trying to reduce the interest rate and my exposure, basically. And, uh, of course, I couldn't get, uh, you know, the, the, the loan back from the royals. And uh, at that stage, uh, further down the line, that's a bit later, I had to put a seize on their chalet in order to be reimbursed. But that's another story that will come further, further down the line. Uh, th by the way, the seize is quite amazing. The legal framework in Switzerland, if someone owes you money, you can prove it. The, the legal framework wants to get something like 5% of what you're claiming to start protecting its citizens and the people that uh, basically uh, have uh, this loan. Mm. And the... Uh, the study that I was using at the time, Etude Rusconi, the Rusconi study with the Maître Bruchet, the lawyer, Mr. Bruchet, they took the liberty to, I wouldn't say cancel the seize, but put it on hold because I hadn't paid, you know, the 65,000 that I had to lay on the table in order to be, uh, you know, for the seize to be effective. And they took this decision, Maître Brochet, you know, the lawyer, he took this decision without even calling me. And of course, when they received, because, I, you know, I was quite short on liquidity at this stage in time. And, uh, you know, they took the decision without even calling me. That's crazy. But this is how the legal framework works in Switzerland, not defending the citizens' interest, but only the financial interests of those 
who seem you know to, to have the most potential for uh, paying and the highest profile so as i said in another video pay in switzerland will welcome you pay in the legal framework of switzerland will protect and hide your worst dishonesty that's a fact of life and i'm not too i'm not too proud of it so anyway i said the hit the shit hits the fan and we don't really speak to one another and at that stage uh, well all the capital that the chalet represents my home represents was unoccupied and i remember my wife uh, one evening almost blowing her fuse because i was you know uh, basically paying interest and the capital was eroding itself and so forth and you know she goes uh you know we need to do something with this chalet and the royals they wanted to do a few transformations you know a renovation of the chalet and i had to pay it that so out of the capital again so i invested an extra two millions along their side under their command because they hired someone uh, a very charming lady by the way uh who transformed and they re renovated the chalet because of course prince andrew he wanted to have a suite and we transformed my office basically into a suite and huge bathroom please refer to the 360 camera tour that i did of the chalet where in which you can if you use an android or iphone uh you can look at whatever you want by just turning the phone or if you're on a computer just take your mouse and scroll left right high up you, you'll see whatever you want it just shows you you know the royal suite and sarah's room and so forth please be my guest have a look it's quite a nice place by the way so I, re, you know, renovated the chalet and we started to rent it. And we rented it through an agency called Brambleski, one of the best agency in Verbier for renting luxury places. They do that. Uh, it's their main business model. They do that in Verbier, in Zermatt. They are very good again, very professional. And uh, the revenues created by the renting, the renting revenues, were immediately transferred to the royal family, to Sarah, minus my taxes. So I was again carrying the contract in my name, but all the profit were sent to the royal family. And, you know, I was so naive, in a sense, at the time, thinking that I would be treated correctly with decency by sarah and the prince andrew and namely also by the bank because the bank was in charge of administrating and managing the whole case but in fact i was dropped you know like an old pair of shoes you don't want to use anymore and i was alone so i had to take all the managing decision i didn't want the capital of my home sleeping so I renovated at my own cost, and then I was still sending the rental revenues because we had a verbal agreement. And as I said, I never lie. Lies will not go through my mouth. It's a choice of life, of way of life that I've made like years ago. And I will never leave it or betray it. That's so I sent it and my wife blows her fuses at that stage, says, oh, but we don't even cover the interest. We are eroding the capital. She's a banker. So she understands number very well. And I was there, you know, I was, oh, yeah, what can I do? Okay. And I had to basically restructure the deal. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Saga Sagar Matter. May peace be with you. Peace out.